Okay, here's the plot to the Thor movie because it seems like whatever it supposedly is isn't working. So Thor gets some sort of magical, I'm just making this up in the moment, um, object, say from the collector or for whoever, that can, you know, connect him in location to what he loves the most. So supposedly, you know, let's see here. Natalie Portman's pregnant, so he's trying to get to her. So then he keeps going around. And, like, for example, the point where he's with uh, Chris Pratt and, you know, he, he says, you know, it's the people you really love that matter. And they're looking into each other's eyes, that awkward scene. I don't even care at this point. If Natalie Portman character isn't there and she's still gone and lost in the plot still before the end of the movie, then wouldn't it be that he just is getting really effed up and, like, he's just hallucinating that that Chris Pratt is Natalie Portman or something? That's how weird the scene is. And that's the only way you can repair that if you want to go that far. So then he just follows the uh, object, the Leahona of love, to... Uh, some evil planet and he's all confused as he goes there and then as i said before they try to shock him as they all reveal their demons that are like trying to suck energy out of babies you know and then he uh has like some infection energy place then he as they try to steal energy from him uh and tase him or whatever with their bad energy then he swells up on energy even bigger and more muscular like he has now and possibly on working out for another two years. So then he blasts infinite electricity that cleanses the entire planet they're on with giant thunderstorms. Then the planet is revealed as evil, like I said, and cracks open like a mold spore and explodes as then he flies into the camera, exploding the camera with the dust of the planet erupting. That doesn't have to be the end of the movie. He could then go on to meet Natalie Portman. This could be, they could have their whole movie done. I could just be coming up with ideas to fill it out or for another movie or before this movie kind of have more data of a different movie. Because I don't know. It feels like there's a lot of scenes already out there and I just need to throw out more ideas to fill it out so they have all the pieces they need to uh, assemble everything. So, Thor's supposed to be stupid and arrogant and overly charged with energy always, right? So he always brute forces a solution. And everybody says, you can't do that. And then he laughs and drinks more fucking alcohol. So, the point here is we got to enhance that concept even farther. So he just gets frustrated because he can't figure out where, you know, his love interest is. So he goes to the place where the Avengers shrunk down in size through time and space to fix Thanos poofing everyone temporarily. Because Thanos temporarily did that, and they temporarily have fixed it. So anyways, he shows up, and he's like, let me use your magic, you know, shocking machine. I gotta go find her, you know. And they're like, that's not how it works, whoever's around. Probably hulky dude or whatever who tries to stop him. You can have a stupid scuffle then Thor's super powerful and shocks him with love energy and then he get, it activates the machine he gets blasted through time and space then he's on a quest in an interdimensional size and space like infecting people's dreams or some bullshit so he shows up where Chris Pratt you know in Thor's whatever spaceship he has that he's got from whoever I forget he shows up where Chris Pratt is filming his dumb movie separately within a movie. And then from there, the plot progresses, obviously, the way I've already said. So, here's what I was thinking. Mark Ruffled Fluffalo would be the guy who, you know, is, of course, at the uh, facility like he already mentioned, who fights Thor, and then he, you know, shocks through his green hulky energy, and the energy starts the machine, because he's, you know, nuclear, that's the joke, you know? Yeah. Um, so, then we have this thing where, like, 
Mark Ruffalo's there if he's available, you know, Ant-Man. Because uh, he's he should be training for at least... Because uh, here was our concept, just briefly. Ant-Man, oh, are you saying he should be able to be mastering atomic size changing? Because that's why he's training there? No, what I was saying is he's training for... Uh, <laughs> For at least the the stupid thing where you they scan your body with with like lasers that are pinpointing all of it. Yeah. Because you know the three D technology is a little bit better, and then you know they do that false forty eight frames because here's why, for a experience that's on rails like you make an Ant Man movie where it's all like roller coastery like literally he's like on a cosmic train driving around. Yeah. And like trying to prevent bandits from stealing the valuable gems and, and gold and stuff aboard it for like yeah. a short video experience just to test if he can do it. Yeah. You know, in the multiverse of madness. Yeah. Because like he needs to level up his, his brain cells and his booty cells and his, his toenail cells. So, like, in the scene, he's just sitting there eating as many tacos as possible while he's watching them fight each other and sort of, like, cowering behind things while eating tacos. <laughs> yes. So the challenge is to, you know, move his facial muscles around while continuing to cram in tacos, you know? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Because he needs to eat healthy tacos without sodium. Yeah. And, uh... You just eat a lot of them because he needs to actually build up the energy to actually do this because everybody acts like they'll stroke out like he's like yeah you know, like if the, the frame rate goes too high they're like Ugh. did we mention his roller coaster stuff yet um I don't know <laughs> I think the live stream cut off so I think just the, the, the people that like to spy on people's computers see yeah that. they haven't heard that yet we'll have to make a separate video for that I guess that covers that scene. Yeah, that's it's a test to see if he can even do it. Yeah. After eating a billion tacos. For sure. Because he, yeah, why would he be involved in a fight between Thor and the Hulk? That yeah, wouldn't even make sense. And eats tacos. Yeah, and laughs. Yeah. yeah, he's got like an enormous platter of them and he's just, he's just eating them, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, whatever, yeah. They We really don't need to explain how they fight each other. That's something I will not do. Everyone, This is for the dork wads to do. The digital yeah. and the, the physical department love having Horror Hulk do things. And yeah. Thor a little bit, too. I, it's yeah. so basic. It's so, you know, grudge match type <laughs> of basic that people love the whole, you know. It's in every League of Legends animation. I don't need to get into that. Yeah, and I'm just stating my idea for them fighting each other is so much more interesting than what they came up with in the like last decade. Like, them just Thor hitting Captain America's shield. That was so pointless. There should have been a better reason for it. So I'm just saying this is cheesy and in the vein of what they've already done, but just feels a little better to me. I don't know. Yeah, it feels a little bit better on my nipples, you know? Yeah, nipples of the north. Yes. Chilly like a film. It's like as soon as I saw the Ant-Man original movie, then Ant-Man the Wasp, which I only kind of watched because it's pretty silly, because it's not complete. It wasn't in 40X. It was just... Not It wasn't in its right time and place yet for that silly of a kid's movie. Because what it's really missing is he seems obsessed with trains. He's obsessed. And so he needs to uh, lead up this division of movies that's roller coaster movies. It's the easiest thing to make. You see, think about this. It's designed for the seats that, that piston around. Yeah. So it's an inherently obvious idea for 40X. Because a camera, like, for example, even a DJI, which is why I was pushing for a larger, better design in a live stream I made. Um, what it does is it uh, has a first-person video mode, which just turns the gimbal arm naturally with everything and sort of an automated program. And those inputs are automatically all registered because it's, a, you know, the newest type of camera. And so... If you're on a roller coaster and just hold it, for example, like people have already done, then you can see how it just turns every direction. And those inputs are recorded, so you don't have to do the work like some people do to engineer for old movies, like, you know, for the seats. 
like I assume Morbius did because it's not in no in nowhere near within the time period to uh, be actually planned for 40x but it said it was released in it I didn't watch it anyways um, the ease of access to this effect is too uh, great an opportunity sorry anyways okay so the concept here I had was, of course, you'd be all in your comfy roller coaster seats, however, the design to feel all moving for 40x while you watch a main screen that's projected, and then however often through the movie, because the movies would be made for this, you go around different parts of the roller coaster experience, and then in those parts, it's the parts of the movie where they're on a train and they're going around, so then it's like you're in the action. And you project all around the roller coaster cars going at the right speed of whatever, 25, 35 miles an hour. A uh, mist projection of smoke, whatever, thickly. So then it's like you're piercing through the smoke with your coaster. And the coaster has projection or projectors on it out into the mist so it's like you're watching the movie all around you as you go along the coaster matching the movements of what's happening to the characters and how they're fighting along a train or whatever it's just too dynamic to not do yeah it's the future baby but yeah i uh kind of need to uh have because his movies are a little bit separate and so is i believe the people involved yeah. They are. I, I can tell. There's Seems a, like a it. different sort of team behind them a little bit. I, I kind of probably have to wait longer on the further development of that script because I haven't received any payment for that or anything. Yeah. So. Yep. Got to get that money. Haven't been paid for anything yet. No. Nope. Because you see where we are here, it's been five years of Corona and uh, so uh, that's a long time and uh, still no money. <laughs> Corona can't be an excuse for infinity. You can't have an infinity Corona, you know? Yeah. This isn't going to last forever. Things have to move on. And what I mean by that is um, you can't block business. Yeah, that's what they've done. The entertainment industry. Yep. We've been corona. hanging on these scripts for five years now. Everything we're talking about, we mostly developed five years ago. Yeah. This is insane. And I thought by now we'd have the stabilized economy people thinking along reasonable terms so that the concept of building new rides and amusement parks and updating everything and and the surprises i have concepts for that that i don't want to talk about right now but just is just the beginning you know we need all kinds of good stuff yeah in amusement parks but you know first people have to accept that you exist yeah before <laughs> they accept anything else that's what we're still working on. We're getting there. Yeah. At least it seems like the actors have gotten comfortable with existence being how it is. Because here we are existing. So, like, Iron Man is in contact with uh, Ant-Man while he's going on this crazy space train. Uh, with like interdimensional walkie talkies that they've worked out, you know, the energy frequencies and they can send it through. And so he also, for example, Iron Man technology has given uh, Ant-Man upgrades like he's got like a laser whatever mounted thing, for example, because he's Iron Man. He'd want to put it on Ant-Man's shoulder and that makes him nervous or whatever. So it'd be more like some sort of like, you know... And why am I thinking laser dart? Something ridiculous like that. The point is that Ant-Man shoots lasers at um, space pirates and minimizes them temporarily in hilarious stuff or makes them too big or whatever. Just a bunch of size different stuff, you know, with lasers so we can zap everything in different ways. While Iron Man is like running diagnostics and crap and being like, you know, you should really get the hell out of there because uh, that's a lot of uh, signatures of high energy explosive concentrates of some unknown p 
powerful source, you know? Of course, it's uh, supposed to be concentrated uh, energy that's supposed to be passing. Because this is all the multiverse of madness. It's supposed to be what's left of humanity, the gas cloud that Thanos made out of everyone. It's just energy movement of things that people's bodies were made out of, like the highest energy content that they were made out of being shifted to other places to repair things. Think about it. Once again, the new Spider-Man has fallen through the cracks in reality into crappy New York, just like the original Spider-Man. And so Tony Stark's not going to let that happen. He shows up because he's, you know, alive in some of the uh, multiverse versions of areas. So he shows up and he's like, you're going to be useful and um, actually use this new super like interdimensional buggy mobile thing I've created out of Stark Tech to investigate incursions of monsters and energies and stuff through portals that are installed on the vehicle because Spider-Man is supposed to be super tough and he's not supposed to engage with the monsters just ascertain how, how damage they're doing and pass that on to Wong and whoever else right so uh Spider-Man decides that he really wants to impress whatever her name is, Zendaya, at the restaurant. So he says he can deliver pizza anywhere in the city in 30 minutes or less. So then he starts using the portal Spidey-mobile to, uh, you know, deliver pizza. So then Tony Stark finds out at whatever point, and then he's like, give me some of that pizza. And then he tries it, and he's like, you know what? I'm not even angry. Everybody's so hungry from uh, this pregnant goddess thing going around that uh, you're just going to deliver pizza to everyone interdimensionally. You know what I mean? And at some point here, you got to have Zendaya figure out that he's Spider-Man again and, you know, have it have all the flashbacks and crap. And then you can have all the hilarity where she and Ned, if they're still in the movie, uh, to that degree, whatever degree they want to be in, I guess in the Spidey-mobile, you know, while they're driving around, fighting over the controls, being retards, you know. You know how it is with those movies. So, uh... Hulk keeps blocking Thor from using the, uh, trying to whirl his hammer and charge up the electrical conduit thing that will turn him atomic. So then, you know, um, Thor smashes him with his electricity hammer and it blows him into the wall and then he gets all huge and bigger and greener and tries to, uh, grapple with Thor who throws him into another wall and through the floor and then there's a rumbling and Hulk smashes up you know through the floor grabbing Hulk and uh smashing him uh into a big array of uh surfaces of like wires and instruments and stuff so that you know it causes slight bloody scratches that quickly heal with electricity along Thor's cheek um so then Thor summons his hammer, which was knocked out of his hand by Hulk smashing up through the floor. And then uh, it bashes the Hulk in the head as it goes past, making the Hulk slightly dazed but even angrier so that, like, he's maximum sized. And he grabs the Thor and is squeezing him, you know, as uh, Thor pounds him in the nuts with the hammer so then hulk you know his eyes go all hyper green all silly looking and all juicy watery as he does a high pitch you know hulk noise um so hulk grabs the end of thor's hammer that's shooting electricity from thor into the hammer crackling off of it so then he's getting shocked horrifically into his cells and he's turning all green electrified and then Thor keeps getting uh, more annoyed and 
starts to spin his hammer around with the Hulk on the end of it as he charges up massive gravity from electricity shocking out against everything. As the Hulk turns all green with electricity and he whirls the enormous Hulk around and around with his giant, you know, muscles and eyes shooting electricity every direction. And then it generates out of the coils of the area they're in in the whole room a charge up of the uh, atomic conversion device of, a, of particles of living flesh or whatever from the previous movie. Then um, there's a blast of green energy out of the Hulk that um, sends Thor flying through the portal that's opened as he's kind of like sucked towards it anyways by the electricity discharge of how much he's putting off Thor. And uh, then he's like particleized all the way down to the gas level, like I said, as you see him break down into electricity, all of his muscles like out into light everywhere, dispersing into the uh, air everywhere and instantly generating a massive storm. One key epic moment is how all the electricity, electricity raindrops, it all freezes into hail, you know, that stops falling and hovers in midair as Thor is, you know, in the gas particles in the area after blasting into the interdimensional portal and being turned into electricity itself. So then... As he charges up, you know, on that atomic level, on the little gas particles bouncing all over, then he generates up the necessary lines of force to then invert the storm twist point of the eye of the storm with like a tornado above the city outwards into space into his own custom from the point of them like heavenly like laser lines outwards into space as he projects energetically out to where he's trying to go to. So when Thor gets sucked into the time dimensional portal at the Marvel head or Marvel Avengers headquarters, um this he gets, you know, pulled like, you know, those laser line lights like the Asgardian transport through space dimension, those lines of like eighties laser light. It's like he's Smash through that, you know, while coiling through a different directions like it's the Matrix phone lines or something. You have different sizes and dimensions streaking images of different events and people doing random things, you know, all that stuff. And then he's at first deposited on some micro scale level where he could be humorously, you know, hopping around between like stupid like atomic you know glowy particles you know and then he charges his hammer up more and shoots forward and he changes through time and space and then he's got to like concentrate and a mantra in his head what he's trying to find and uh he's of course trying to not run out of oxygen of course and so He's got to get up through the particle size to, to where the oxygen particles are, you know, the size he can breathe again or whatever. Because uh, even a god has to breathe after 10 minutes, you know, it starts to not feel so good. So then um, he whirls his hammer and learns to control like he's been told he has to do the whole time by his mother. The Asgardian energy fully or whatever. Is it Asgard? Yeah, it is. So anyways, then he creates and controls the streaking laser lines of light off of the electricity and the color of his hammer through time and space and focuses on what he wants from his mentality into the uh, energy of his electricity. Then he tracks down uh, and pops out wherever, uh, you know... Star-Lord's filming his uh, movie with the alien hot princesses and stuff. And all that. And so, 
Thor, you know, humorously, he's gone down to that size of particle, so he's in the entire storm over the uh, headquarters of the tower there. And uh, so then all of the particles of rain are all super electrically charged as, like, he's still there temporarily as he's figuring out what the hell he's doing. Then he tries to concentrate, of course, on um, finding uh, the character he's looking for, his love interest, and then he can't do it like as he reaches for wherever she is and tries to go there and, and go in that location direction. Then it's like he starts like you can have it be like he's getting humorously more pregnant. Like, he can't do it for that reason. Like, he's not compatible. So then he, uh, instead, like, is, like, frustrated and needs transport, like a transport ship from the wear and tear of, uh, smashing through the, uh, cancerous empty spots of the multiverse. And, like, you could have, like, some stupid creatures as he's traveling to get to the location where... Star-Lord has extra ships, you know, that he, he's familiar with that he can fly. Then, um, monsters could attack him or demon wraiths or whatever, and he could blast them away with electrical energy. Um, and that's the explanation as to why he would go, I guess, to Star-Lord's location. So he can get technology ships whatever knowledge maybe reinforcements i don't know how that scene all goes down it seems to have already been filmed so i think we're good there i think uh the star lord plot seems to have been filmed i don't know what's going on with that quite other than we suggested which i can get into in another video i'll start in a second here that um he chris pratt be making a movie about how, you know, he grew up and in the 80s he watched all these cool, you know, science fiction or fantasy movies back in the cinema and he flashes back to that. Then he wants to make a cool movie like that as Star-Lord and so he's gathering resources and they're going to have a fake space battle and hot alien princesses and all that. That's what we suggested for that. I guess I'm kind of just saying it all here and now what our idea for that was. Um, that's a, I'm trying to think what else we suggested other than that. Uh, just basically that everybody could plug into that plot like they have through the scene that we suggested where they're both looking for their passion in life and Chris Pratt describes how he's found it and it's the loved friends in his life and all that. So yeah, I think that sums it up. I guess a quick explanation of Thor's investigations like Batman might do it. He thinks, well, who uh, does portals? You know, the Avengers has done it and it's gone through time and space. So, but first he thinks, hey, Wong, you know, he's the Sorcerer Supreme. He's heard of him. So he goes to talk to him first. And Wong says, oh no, I can only open, you know portals to where the rifts are forming in the multiverse's core essence or whatever of where the energy is all located of everything subatomically and that's not very helpful to finding anything probably because how would you locate anything if you even if you get in there and then pop back out to where you're trying to get in a size and space and time that's correct for who you're trying to find there so then he thinks about it references maybe the library of uh, the cartographer and says there is an object apparently. It's the uh, compass of the heart it's called, the Liahona. So it's like a ball compass and it points you focus on what you want with a lot of energy of love or whatever your desire is most strongly that you can persevere and perceive and then it points the direction and kind of creates an energy trail vaguely so but apparently there's only a few of them around that are known one of them which is located 
in the collector's, you know, collection. And so Thor has to get to that location where the collector is. So he um, goes to Asgard and generates straight there because he knows the location now better because he's come through all that crap, you know. And um, back to where the collector is, spinning his hammer, you know, projecting with the force of Asgard from the uh, spot there as that's being repaired slowly. Uh, the, the, you know, cosmic bridge to anywhere in any galaxy from Asgard. So he barely manages to get there and, um, the collector, states that, um, the woman he's looking for, it's not as simple as he thinks. She's not in any one location, and he doesn't know anything further based off of his, you know, scans of the dimensions of some, you know, dimensional scanner he has of her DNA, you know, of her lock of her hair or whatever. And he says, I don't know, she seems to be everywhere and nowhere. So then he Thor takes the Liahona anyways, and it guides him to the Marvel headquarters where that other time dimensional rift portal is located because the Leahona, as he focuses on memories of her and you know thoughts of how to find her it points that location rather than everywhere at once briefly so that's where he goes because you see Thor finally gets smart and starts thinking about what he might need to do to get to relocate her as he thinks while holding the Leahona, the love compass. So, of course, then he's generated into the multiverse of madness electrically itself, like I stated of his fight with Thor. And then he's tracking down as that energy force that is him extra charged, um, what is preventing the other character played by Natalie Portman from coalescing again in the universe he's in. Cause she apparently in her plot, I don't know. It just states that she gets a special hammer of a female, uh, superhero in, uh, the capital of where Thor lives. And then she goes somewhere and she's battling, something for her pregnant baby's sake on some atomic level. So he obviously, I can plug into that, even though I don't know what that movie is, I haven't seen it yet, that he's just, um, hears from Loki at the Capitol, who uh, heard it from, you know, one of his spy guards or whatever he still has around, that uh, she, you know, maybe found something and disappeared. There was a blast of energy. Um, nobody knows where she went, right? So then Thor blows up that planet, which is a sap on the entire multiverse of like, they're like, you know, fake humans that are just parasites on the free energy of the creation of the universe that's gotten loose chaotically. So they're trying to feed off of the super baby that uh, is carried by the Natalie Portman's character as she's battling atomically as well with a hammer. So then finally they meet at some point... Uh, towards the final battle, I'm guessing, of their movies. Uh, her movie probably comes in a little later. I'm not sure. I'm trying to cover his side. So that's all I know, and that's all I got to deliver for the moment.